All right, so I want to thank everyone today for attending, uh, attending the webinar. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Christine Litch, and I've worked for Car Engineering selling a software as a service called Volunteer Hub, an online volunteer management solution for almost seven years now. On the call with me today is Cheryl Ross, Marketing Programs Manager at Xerox Corporation. Uh, back in 2008, I met an old counterpart of Cheryl's at the National Habitat for Humanity Conference in Atlanta, Georgia. And she introduced me to their free color printer program. And I thought it was a great, great resource of, um, or I'm sorry, for clients of Volunteer Hub, as well as other organizations that may be in our network through our Volunteer Hub brief newsletter. In just a few minutes, Cheryl will be presenting a wonderful webinar on different tips for getting more donors and volunteers, as well as explaining the free color printer program. Uh, but first let me go through a few housekeeping items. Um, today's webinar will be recorded. Um, we, it will also be muted, so you'll notice that we can't hear you right now. Um, if you have any technical difficulties, you can dial star 7 to unmute your line. And to remute your uh, line, dial star 6. So that's star 7 and star 6. Uh, we will be using the raise hand feature in ReadyTalk to answer questions at the end of the webinar. We'll have about hopefully about 10-15 minutes to answer questions. Um, what I'd like you all to do now is to go ahead and click on the raise hand button at the top of your um, Ready Talk control panel there. Great. I want to just make sure everybody knows where that is. Okay. Again, if everybody could click on the raise hand button. Okay, it looks like most of you know where that is, so great. All right, so without further ado, I'd like to now have Cheryl get started. Um, and I want to thank her for presenting today. So thanks, Cheryl. You can go ahead. Thank you, Christine. And thank you to everyone um, for taking time out of your very busy day to attend our webinar. Um, this is short and sweet. Um, I have about 15 minutes of material to share with you today. And then that will leave plenty of time after my presentation to answer any questions that you may have. So we'll start with the uh, first slide here. Why are we here? Well, it's because nonprofits today need to do more with even less. Um, nonprofits have you know, never been particularly rich with cash. But um, if you look at the recent studies, um, this one from the Nonprofit Research Collective, it revealed that 65% of nonprofits have reported an increase in demand for services. This is at the same time that 28% reported declining philanthropic, philanthropic support, and 31% said they were receiving fat philanthropic support. There's also a decrease uh, in decline from non-philanthropic sources um, such as you know, just your everyday giving. And then finally, um, over half of organizations have reported a decrease in government funding. And if you want to see the details of the study, um, there's a link down there at the bottom of the slide. I encourage you to download the PDF and read through it for yourself. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Next slide, please. So, Keeping all of these challenges in mind, what is a nonprofit supposed to do? Um, with all these people needing more services, not enough money, what can you do to uh, counteract that? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. First of all, you have an existing donor base, existing volunteer base. You need to figure out you know, what can you do to get them to contribute even more. You also need to figure out how to attract a new pool of donors, a new pool of volunteers to your organization. So really, um, there's five things that you need to keep in mind when you're designing outreach materials to speak to these very important constituent groups. We'll go through them in more detail on the following slides, but in order, I'd say they are to know your audience, to write from the heart, to make it personal, 
to include specific calls to action. And don't forget about print. Next slide, please. So starting with the first tip, it's pretty basic. It's Communications 101 really, but you need to know your audience. You need to understand your basic demographics so you can tune your messaging. For example, um, millennials, which are defined as those people born after 1980, have been heavily influenced by the information age, by 9-11, the Iraq War, the 2008 presidential election, and a lot of other significant historical events in the past 30 years. The millennial generation, more than any other, is highly technically savvy. And in fact, um, judging from my niece and nephew who are in that demographic, they, uh, they consider their iPhone and Android phones like uh, appendages, much like uh, feet and arms for the rest of us. So if you look here, I've got a couple of examples of how different organizations are appealing to different ends of the generational spectrum. The first one is from DoSomething.org. And if you're not familiar with DoSomething.org, they are kind of a clearinghouse for volunteer opportunities for 25 and under. And you can see here in the header, you know, even their use of language like awesome things, if you were go to to go to their website, you can see um, some very interesting language in the rest of their navigation um, when they talk about um, people instead of saying our community, they say our peeps. Um, they use language like random stuff, mind-blowing stats. Um, it's a pretty entertaining read actually to go there. Um, they also integrate social media throughout their website, speaking very effectively to the demographic that they are trying to reach. If you look at the second example, um, this is a senior center that's primarily seeking older adults as volunteers. If you look at the copy, they say share your time and talents, uh, customize opportunities. This is particularly important because we have a baby boomer generation. Um, the oldest boomers are now reaching retirement age. They represent a huge pool of volunteers with decades of experience that can contribute to your organization. Um, if you think about it, you've got retiring professors that could tutor school children, or retired lawyers um, to provide pro bono legal advice. If you don't know that much about your donors or volunteers, you can consider asking them to complete a brief survey. And just know that adding an incentive, even a small one, will dramatically increase your response. And then you can take action and tune your messaging effectively based on what you may have known or have not known about your demographics. Next slide please. Tip number two, right from the heart. This is pretty basic, but again, people donate or volunteer because a cause speaks to their values. So you want to make sure that in your language, in your imagery, um, in your videos if you have them, that you're really you know, thinking about what might drive that person to donate or volunteer, and then speak to those values of that individual. The example I have here on the left is from Habitat for Humanity. And we are fortunate to have several habitats as customers of the Xerox Free Color Printers program. So I hope they don't mind me using their example here. Um, but I think it does a great job of speaking to the very active nature of their volunteer opportunities. Um, the copy they use, join in the fight, lend a hand, take action. Um, it really speaks to the active nature of you know, building a house for a qualified homeowner. They also do a great job of reaching out to different potential volunteer pools. You can see the links. Um, they have specific programs for youth, for women, and so on. Now the example on the right is for Cat Adoption Team. It's a nonprofit near and dear to my heart uh, located here in Sherwood, Oregon, which is near the Xerox campus. Um, they speak about you know, the importance of saving lives. And to drive this home, they include a moving volunteer testimonial on their web page. Um, even better, if you can include videos, be sure to include a diverse selection of volunteers so the people that you're trying to get to help you out can see themselves in your organization. Uh, next slide please. 
Tip number three, make it personal. You should be as specific as possible in tying a desired action to the result, or probably better stated, the donation to the benefit. I've included an example here from Meals on Wheels uh, because I think they do an excellent job of really making this personal. Um, if you take a look at their giving options here, um, they want you to donate to help end senior hunger by 2020. But instead of saying, you know, donate $20 or donate $50, um, they break it down. Uh, they start with 100 seniors being helped with a $700 donation, all the way down to helping out 5 seniors for a $35 donation. Now, I know most people know at least 5 seniors who are near and dear to their hearts. And making these donation amounts by tying them to a specific number of seniors, it makes it seem so much more personal. Um, also on this page, you can't see it in the screenshot here, but if you were to scroll below the giving options down below the left navigation, there's a really moving video that shows how Meals on Wheels helps seniors every day. And I watched it, <laughs> and one of the seniors actually reminded me of my grandpa. And I think if you watch it, you would probably see the same thing. And uh, I think this is really an effective way of uh, making the appeal even more meaningful. Uh, next slide, please. Tip number four, include specific calls to action. Always, always ask your readers to do something specific and immediate, and ask them in multiple ways and places. Uh, we can often get caught up in you know, emotion, nonprofits, um, serving different groups that we all care about. Um, we can get very caught up in crafting the emotional appeal, you know, great imagery, uh, great copy. But you need to be very clear about what you want people to do next. And I think the Humane Society of the United States does a great job here. The example on the left is uh, their home page. And you'll see in the yellow uh, navigation bar on the right, they have several things that you can do. I chose to sign up for their newsletter and I received the response page on the right that says, Welcome to our online community. And they could have stopped there, um, but they didn't. I think this is brilliant. <laughs> they took advantage of my mindset, which was, you know, I want to get involved with HSUS because I care about animals. And they gave me two more very specific ways that I could help animals right now. Uh, the first one, to take the pledge to stop puppy mills. And number two, to uh, help animals every month by setting up a monthly donation. The thing is with these, you just never know what's going to catch someone's eye. Um, in fact, here at Xerox, we redesigned our order confirmation and shipment confirmation emails a while back. And while we all thought it was a, a change for the better, to our dismay, we started to see a significant decline in our click-through rates. And by looking at our analytics, I was able to trace it back to the fact that we took out one humble little text link. So we added that text link back in, and we saw our click-through rates bounce back to normal percentage range. So the, uh, the moral of this story is just test different places, different calls to action, banners, text links. Um, with analytics these days, you can really get a lot of information in a very short amount of time and then take action. Uh, next slide, please. Finally, the last tip, don't forget about print. Knowing your audience definitely comes into play here. So if appealing to older adults is important to you, um, you need to know that as we age, the contrast between colors sometimes becomes less noticeable. You need to take this into account when you're choosing to reverse out different words. Um, you can see the example here on the right, the volunteer open house. The white on light orange is a little bit less readable than say the white on blue. So if you're trying to attract older adults, um, think about your contrast and also consider a larger font size. The example on the left from Habitat for Humanity I think they do a great job of uh, highlighting the, the important words, using contrast, um, and an effective font size for all ages. 
Another advantage to using print is its longevity. Um, as we all know, posts on social networks and emails are pretty short-lived, and they soon get buried in the feed or in the inbox. But a print piece can be put up on a bulletin board or a refrigerator as a physical reminder of your organization. And print can also serve as a good traffic referral source for your online properties. Next slide please. And finally, um, the print tip is a good segue into just a couple of words about the Xerox Free Color Printer Program. We have been around since 1999, um, and we provide organizations with an environmentally friendly solid ink color printer for no upfront cost. The way it works is if you qualify, we will ship you a color printer and cover it end-to-end -end with service for three years. In exchange, you just agree to buy the printer ink directly from us for three years, and after that three-year period, the printer is yours to keep. And this is a good fit for you if you print 2,000 pages a month or about four reams of paper and have a need for color. And if you want to apply or just want more information on the program, I encourage you to visit the URL or call the 800 number that I have listed on the slide here. And that's everything I have today. All right. Great. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, at this time, we would like to take any questions that you might have. So I'm going to uh, hopefully get the list of attendees here and take a look. Does, if anybody has any questions, feel free to click the Raise Hand feature. Okay, here we go. So I see Bonnie Mertz. If you want to unmute your line, dial star 7. Hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. D did you have a question, Bonnie? Oh. Bonnie, are you there? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good technical difficulty. Uh, yeah, it looks like a technical difficulty. Okay, let's um, move on to Michelle McKenzie. Michelle, do you have a, a question? If you can dial star 7 on your phone. Christine, can we maybe have people type in their questions? Yeah, if, you have, if you're having technical difficulties with the uh, Raise Hand feature, you can always um, type in the chat window as well um, your questions. How about Sharon? Sharon, do you have a question? <laughs> well, Rita asked if we can have a copy of the PowerPoint. Um, yes, we will be giving you that after the demonstration as well as um, the recording of this demonstration, this webinar. So you'll have both. And I apologize in advance for my scratchy voice. <laughs> I have a little allergies this morning. So um, if you hear me croaking, that's, that's the reason. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Lisa, you asked, I missed most of the meeting. Um, will you send a review of today's webinar? Uh, again, yes, we will send you the PowerPoint slides as well as a recording of the, the webinar today. All right, anyone else? Any questions about the Free Color Printer Program? Um, were there any slides that you wanted to review? I'll bring that back up. Nothing? Okay. Yeah, it sounds like maybe there's, uh, there's something going on with the uh, I'm not sure, but <laughs> yeah. if anyone uh, you know is shy or they weren't able to um, unmute the line effectively, feel free to follow up with me. Uh, my email address is 
C H E R Y L E dot Ross R O S S at Xerox dot com. Just shoot me an email and I'll be more than happy to answer whatever questions you may have. Yeah, and I want to thank everyone for attending today. Thank you, Cheryl. And um, if you have any questions for me um, in regards to Volunteer Hub or uh, the webinar today, feel free to contact me. My um, email address is listed there on the screen. It's C-L-I-T-C-H at car-engineering.com or at volunteerhub.com. Either will work. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Please stand by.